Hey, it's John McBride with an ArmUS Tech Connect. Yeah, showing you a little bit about the new Mavic 2 Enterprise that was just recently released and uh, kind of giving you our thoughts as well as some of the uh, technical and uh, operational aspects of how this ship will help you in the uh, public service space, inspection space, uh, not really in tune for too much of the cinema stuff because there has been some questions on whether or not the Mavic 2 Zoom and the Mavic 2 Hasselblad versions, uh, were, how they might compare with these. But there are some big differences. We'll discuss that as we uh, talk about this in, the, in this video. So the first thing is just a little bit of the items that are coming along with this ship. The Mavic 2 Enterprise comes with a ship, the radio system, and then we're looking also at a single battery and stock charger. In the middle of that, we have a LED for doing spot lighting and searching. We have an LED that was made for nighttime operation. And then kind of a new one is, or a neat one, is a uh, little speaker system that uh, is available to do playback in any of the videos or in any of the uh, uh, loudspeaker kind of situations, which we might need that. So kind of a neat, neat system there. We'll discuss and talk about that. And then included in this, in which we're going to show a couple of things here, is the Flymore combo. And in the Flymore combo, you'll get another extra two batteries. So you get two extra batteries. The USB charger, so we can hook that up to a, an actual stock battery and then use uh, charge things USB here. We can, we can use that. That comes with the combo. And then the hub charger. Hub charger is really awesome. I mean, it uses the stock charger, but when we pop the little, uh, the little charger open, we're actually able to charge four batteries at a single time. Even though that is actually choosing one battery at a time to actually do it, we can set them all up on here and, and kind of uh, let, it, let the charger do its thing, but it still utilizes the stock charger. Uh, kind, of a, kind of the neat thing, even though we have a probably likely GP, GPC, coming up with a case on this one uh, or an insert or whatever is that in the cavities inside of here we've got plenty of room for other things because the actual additional props, car charger, that all comes with the fly more combo as well. So we have these items too so there's plenty of space and plenty of room for all of that. So the one of the neat things again about the Mavic 2 Enterprise is again creating these, uh, these add-on little uh, uh, devices that will help hopefully in, in doing some of the search and rescue, the um, nighttime operation, as well as the speaker. Uh, that, those attach right here up on the top. There's just a little cover that we can take off, and then these all just attach there on the top. There's a little smaller USB that's kind of there that we want to be careful with when we make a connection, but as soon as that connection is made, the application actually can see that when it's when when you connect it there and give you the operational buttons and everything else that we'll go through here in just a second so same thing with the Mavic pretty simple to remove this cover I'm gonna pull that off folding our arms out and then out this way so pretty compact little unit I mean it's uh, no different than of the any of the other Mavericks but the but the ship itself has a couple of other sensors on there that the original does not. So it has the front sensors on there that you can see. But additionally, it has a rear sensor and side sensors on there. So with that, you know, we have the ability to do a little bit of obstacle avoidance. Uh, and then also on the bottom sensors, which are very similar to what the other Mavic had as well. There is a, a, these are actually LEDs. Let me take a close look at that. Those are actually LEDs. We can operational operate them remotely, turning them on and off, but you can also automate them so that they can see the ground when it lands. Kind of a neat little system there. So a lot of things that they thought about in adding a, a couple of complementary uh, systems into this that were like, hey, th this is what's working really well with the Mavic, doing really quick flights and really quick stuff. But man, it would be really great if we could do a couple of things. So. What all the public service guys are pretty, pretty excited about what this is going to be able to offer. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the app and see some of the things that kind of make this special and why they might be a little bit different. Just let it be known that when we use the app, you can use an iPad with this. So it's possible to use an iPad. You can download the Pilot app for that. But today, we're going to be, we're going to be using the Crystal Sky 
we've got the Mav mount on there, and we're going to be using a crystal sky to show you a little bit around the app itself and some of the things of operating the lights and LEDs and everything else. So let's take a look at that. Okay, as we take a look at the Pilot app, that's what we're using here. The uh, Mavic 2 Enterprise does not work with the Go 4 or Go app, but what, what it does is uh, use, utilizes the Pilot app. So as we get into the Pilot app, we have Manual Flight and Mission Flight, and we're just going to choose right now on a Manual Flight. But we can see at the bottom, let's ignore that, we can see at the bottom that the Zoom, Mavic 2 Enterprise, Zoom, and the M2E Spotlight is, is currently installed on here right now. So we're going to do a function check, test on that show you how that works. So right when you pull it up, we can see our ship right there. We have a couple of things across the top here. We have the ready to go mission. I mean, it's, it is ready to go. I have multiple flight modes set up on this so I can change to different sport mode or the attitude mode. A couple warnings that it will tell you when you're getting that ready to go. And if I clip up, click on the top right where the three buttons are, I have a couple of different menu options, not much different than the Mavic 2. Mavic 2 Pro is all pretty much the same, very similar. Uh, obstacle avoidance uh, options, if we want to use that or turn those on. We can program a couple of neat things here that, uh, especially on the 5D button here, right on the bottom, I can change the way that 5D button operates. And a uh, little just shortcuts here and there on the C1 and C2. We can, we can set those up how we'd like. On the HD screen, we can change whether or not we want to move our frequencies. So 2.4, 5.8, or dual band. Kind of a, not a necessarily new thing here, but very important when you might be running into some conflictive areas or environments in which you need to change your video stream uh, to work in that, that environment of RF. Uh, we can also change our image transmission rate. Uh, we can change the HD mode. A lot of different things here in the actual video transmission. Battery page, uh, we can set up our warnings, critical warnings, return smart home. I mean, there, there's a number of options that, again, that are here that are awesome to give us and monitor any of that stuff. The gimbal mode has two different, system, two different ways of working. I'm going to pick up the bird right now. So in the follow mode, I have the follow mode. We're going to come back out of the screen here. I do have the follow mode where the bird actually, the camera will follow the front end, end of the machine, but if I roll or move left or right, the camera itself is actually stabilizing itself during that time. In FPV mode, where not a lot of people use this mode, and I'm just talking about it for a second, is it in, while it's in FPV mode, I actually have a roll amount that allows the camera to roll a little bit. So that helps maybe with some piloting that that's happening it keeps that uh, rolling a, a visual picture helpful for kind of maneuvering through spaces because um, unfortunately when you're piloting, I mean, the, the better that we become uh, at piloting, people are like, hey, I don't like that because it, it does necessarily. But when I'm flying through a building, I actually like to use that mode because it, it allows me to know that I actually gave it a right or left sliding motion, if you will. Here is the actual, on this page right here, is the attachment that we put on there and currently we have the spotlight on. So the spotlight, I can turn up the brightness to only 50%. We can see that going right here. When it's on the ground and not flying, I can only turn it to 50% uh, because of the eye strain and you might be able to see what this looks like real quick, but I'm gonna drop it down to 8%, turn on the light. We can see how bright that is right now, pretty bright. And I can increase the brightness on this 50%. Increase the brightness up to 50 on the ground. And that is pretty bright as we look around. Look at items around in the shop here. Pretty bright. So that's just itself, the, the LED. Up on the top left, we have a time stamp and GPS stamp. Um, as far as position as well as the GPS when we actually do have GPS, that's where the NANA is. But the little light I can turn on or off from the button just above that, so we can see that. Down on the bottom, or on the bottom of here, we've got the map that loads, so we can click on the map and see where we're at. Go back to our view and screen, and then it's going to show us all of the how far we are, how high we are, our GPS position at that time. 
We can do all of our menu setting buttons over here on the right side to where navigating how we want the actual camera to operate, whether we're in 4K, which I don't suggest. I mean, keep it in 10, 1080. There's no reason to be in 4K for the most part, but yep, we keep it in 1080 just to save space on the card. Now that's the next part. Down here on the left, we can see this SD card not inserted. There is a hard SD card that is available for the Mavic 2 Enterprise, but it also has an internal SD card. So that's kind of a neat option that if you didn't have one or forgot one, that it's doing recording right there that you can still play back. So let's just do a, a quick picture. This does not have an SD card in it. I'll take a quick snapshot there and then press the play button. And you can see our image has actually showed up on the internal storage. So that's a neat one to be able to do that the other versions uh, uh, don't have as, as big of a storage capacity. This is actually has a larger storage capacity. But again, you forget your SD card or don't have your SD card, kind of a, a neat thing to, to see. If we take a look back at, uh, at some of the other components here, let's do a quick swap and change to the speaker. So I suggest that we always turn the ship off. Don't try to hot swap these. There's always the possibility of uh, you know, shorting something or, or messing something up when we do this. But if we do the speaker real quick, it's actually a really quick swap. It's not uh, very difficult. We'll line up our pins here, sorry. And then screw our fasteners down. Power back on. And as soon as I get an auto populate, you'll see on the screen here that kind of changes a few things. Um, you'll see the, the screen actually populate the speaker itself. I'm going to come back out in the app. And we can see the speaker right there on the bottom. So M2E with speaker. Click on that. Since we're just going to talk about the speaker really quick. You can see the accessory down here on the bottom. I can add audio here, so I can add my own audio clip if I want to. It'll let me get that far. There we go. So I can create a clip right there, and then I can do a repetitive, repetitive, continually uh, uh, having a, a uh, some kind of audible noise go, you know, all the time. Uh, for an example, John Doe, we have found your family. Please don't move anywhere. Stay still. And it'll repeat that over and over and over again if we set to do it. If we click up on the top left, though, we can do basically a quick play to talk broadcast. So for the moment, I can go ahead and tap that, hold it, and it's recording at this moment. And as soon as I let it go, I'm sorry, tap it, then talk. Now it's recording at this moment. And as soon as it's recorded, I can hit stop. As I let it go, I'm sorry, tap it, then talk. Now it's recording at this moment. And as soon as it's recorded, I can hit stop. So basically, that is the kind of instant broadcast or, or push to talk kind of option that you actually have right there. So being able to press for a second and do that. But on the other page, we can add audio files and, and repeat those over and over again. So another one that, uh, again, I had discussed it when we were first looking at was the actual uh, light on the bottom. So if we come down here to the sensors, we have this small little light. Sorry, maybe the sensors here. We come down to the bottom of that. We have a bottom auxiliary lighting. That auxiliary lighting, if we turn that on, you can see that light happen right there. And then that just gives us a, a good light to work with when we're doing any landing and taking off at night. I mean, I, I would use this for at night. Sometimes when I'm doing nighttime operations, if we are and we have the, you know, plenty of LEDs and stuff on there, but what tends to be slightly difficult is the fact that when you come in for a landing, you can't actually see the ship very well. Sometimes I'll have somebody go ahead and give me a spotlight or a flashlight real quick at the machine so I can see the landing area. And even though it might, you might be able to light this area up, this is actually a pretty good option to turn that light on real quick, being able to see and spot where their ship is coming in. You have a little bit more eyes on target when you're actually trying to manipulate this around. So the last one would just be your LED here and the LED itself. Uh, pretty simple operation here. It's just an on and off. Um, we can demonstrate that real quick, but nothing too difficult. I'll let that power down, do an exchange again real quick. 
line it up, screw our little things down, power her back up. So between payloads, this would be a very quick swap. It doesn't have to be anything remotely complicated here. Um, but I do suggest turning it and powering it down, hot swapping it. I, you know, I prefer that you guys were, were doing that. So up there on the top left, we just have a button. We can turn that on and off. And this, even though it's pretty bright, we can see it in the screen flashing, but even though it's pretty bright, turning it on and off, this is, uh, as far as the payloads, two separate payloads when you're talking about an LED that uh, flashes and then uh, the spotlight configuration, even though separating these two people are like hey why would that happen but that probably has a lot to do with power consumption since this is pretty much just a small usb on the top of this but you know i'm not an engineer i didn't create that but that's it's not a very big not a very big uh power out probably doesn't carry a whole lot of amperage there to do operation because this this actually is a pretty high consuming power you know it takes a lot to push that type of voltage through as well as amperage to make these run pretty bright. Adding another LED, you can add another, you know, little small Cree light or something like that on there. That's not bad to do if you're running the spotlight. So as far as the, the, the whole concept and the M2E itself and how, what I am considering a pretty good enterprise tool as far as uh, getting it out there and again, using it for public service, there's uh, probably going to be a lot of other uh, simple features that come up. Um, that, that everyone's gonna be experimenting with this ship, figuring out what's gonna be best for their, and suited for their stuff. Again, we're anticipating a pretty sweet uh, um, case from GPC, and uh, that's kind of where we're at. We're gonna have another video here that uh, will show a little bit of the outside flying and doing some fun stuff like that, but uh, another RMUS Tech Connect uh, video from uh, John McBride, and we're gonna get a lot more of these out there so that you guys can uh, Keep up to date with some of the new stuff that's coming out as well as any of the tech alerts. And those are the videos that we do in order to letting everybody know kind of what's in, you know, emergencies and things that are happening with any of your devices and any of the DJI or any other equipment that's out there. So thanks again, guys.